Hello, I'm Pastor Don. Welcome to Outback Adventures. Today I have with me a special guest, Clinton Farmer, and he comes from Kookaburra Community near Waluna in Western Australia. Welcome, Clinton. Great to have you with us today. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting me and having me you on your program. Very good. Now, we mentioned you come from Waluna, but uh, how far is that from Perth? About 970 k's. Really? That's a long trip, and, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly a long way to travel every time you want to go to Perth. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, you live actually just out of Waluna at a place called Kookaburra. Kookaburra yeah. It's and about 30 k's north of Waluna. Right, and that's just a small little community, is that right? Yeah, and it's also dry community. We don't allow alcohol or any drugs. Oh, that would be a nice place to live. Yes, that's really, uh, and that's the decision of, of your family, really, yes. that there's no alcohol and no drugs there. Yeah. That's really good. Now, Clinton, your mother and father, uh, they weren't born in, in a hospital somewhere, were they? they? Where were they born? Mum and Dad were both born out in the Gibson Desert. Is that right? Yeah. And that's way out from Waluna, further out? Yes. Well, and so as, as little children, your mum and dad with their parents would have really walked around the desert as nomads, is that right? Yes, and you know, travel and live off the land. Yeah, so what would have been a day's activities for, for your grandparents then? They would um, go out and hunting for different lizards and different animals. Yes. And also gather fruits. So a lot of their day yeah. really would have been taken up looking for food. Yeah, it was a harsh, um, tough, la life. tough life and yeah, hard land to yeah. live in. And I guess in addition to looking for food, they'd have spent some time making boomerangs and, and spears. spears. Yeah. And uh, what about water? They couldn't turn the tap on, eh? No, <laughs> the water, our, our people knew, knew the stories and um, it was passed on by songs and stories yes. where to find water and they knew that story well and it was passed on to the kids so it continued to pass on generation to generation would have over been thousands so, of years here. Yeah. Would have been so important for those kids to learn that education otherwise <laughs> they'd have been finished out in the desert wouldn't they? Yes. Well, Clinton, let's have a little look at some of the bush tucker that uh, your grandparents would have been uh, trying to find. I guess emu would have been on the menu, eh? Yes. And when they'd have seen all these young ones, that would have made them happy because yeah. that's food for tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Clinton, when you look at this, there's three emus there, and I guess you can see them real easy, but... Uh, there might be some people who would be battling to spot them. Yeah. <laughs> but they needed to know how to, how to spot them in this uh, area. What's this one? That's the bush turkey. Yes, and that good one? That's a f one of the favourites and it's better than KFC. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and what's this one here? That's the hill kangaroo. Yes. And so malu or kangaroo, that would have been a, um, a staple part of their diet back yeah. then. And if they came across something like this, what would they have done? This um, hole with the sand going to live, and they dig that, and that, that's what they'll have, the uh, sand going to. Right, right. And that one would... Uh, this uh, bigger one again is uh, much bigger than the sand going to. So they would have eaten yeah. all sorts of lizards and goannas uh, out there. That would have again been... And a, also s snakes. <laughs> yes, right, right. And what are these? Uh, That's a witchery grub. And where do they find these? They, uh, old people dig them up from the um, um, roots of the trees. Yes, yeah. well. And then honey ants? Honey ants, yeah. That, that's a lot of work getting honey ants out, isn't it? And uh, you said that uh, often they'd have to travel a long way looking for, for yeah. honey ants. Yeah. So the old people would have got a lot of exercise yeah. in, in finding their food, wouldn't they? Yes. They would have been very fit people, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. And there's a close-up of a honey ant. And uh, now this one. They, uh, 
Besides the animals and the birds and the lizards, the people back then ate a lot of fruits, fruits and, yeah. uh, and roots and seeds and so on. What's this one? That's the kwandong. Yes. And that's quite a prized uh, <laughs> uh, piece of, uh, of, of, of food, isn't it? Yes. And uh, then this one? Yes. Uh, in our language, we call it wamula. And yeah. it's a good eating too, one of the desert fruits. And so that's the inside of it. Now, which part of that do you eat, Clinton? The outside, the uh, inside of seeds, and that you, we clean that out, and we all, um, you, it was, you have to keep the seeds away from your eye because it'll um, burn. Ooh. And we, uh, it will, the old people will eat the outside here. Yes. And this one, what's this? That's the sweet potato. Um, I've tried this just recently, and I really think this is the ice cream of the desert. It is nice and sweet, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Clinton. We're going to take a little break now, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you about, we're going to talk about an interesting connection between, between Clinton and the last of the nomads. Welcome back. I have with me today Clinton Farmer from Waluna in Western Australia. And we've been talking about uh, Clinton's parents wandering around in the Gibson Desert as nomads when they were little children. Now it's interesting that as you drive into Waluna today from the Kalgoorlie side, you see these uh, statues there beside the road. And who are these people, Clinton? They are the last of the nomads, um, last of the uh, last two people who were brought in from our tribe. Right. And um, what's their names? Um, Wari and Yudoko. And uh, you're actually related to these people, I understand. Yeah, the old lady is my, one of my grandmothers, and the old fellow is one of my uncles. Right. Well, yeah. that makes you very special. Now, I understand they were brought in in about 1977 yes. from the desert. There was a particularly dry time and uh, family in Waluna were concerned about their welfare and so they went out looking for them and they found them just before they died. Yes. Yeah. How did they, is there a story behind why they were wandering around out there for so long? The story, what happened, um, they were married the wrong way and they right. broke the screen group law right. that all the desert tribe has in place to um, 
went to that um, they weren't to, they had, to, had in place to have strong um, children. Off, children, yeah. Yeah, so they married wrong way yeah. and they were fearful of punishment. Yeah. And so they took off, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Well, that's, uh, and you said they were like a modern day what? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but isn't Michael it? Romeo and Juliet, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, it's a fascinating story. Now, there's a book been written on their life, like we've just been talking about, telling how that uh, the search party went out and tracked them down. And there's also been a couple of DVDs mm. produced uh, regarding these. And I understand, Clinton, that in the DVD, um, your mum and dad feature and a number of our Adventist church members there in Waluna yes. are characters uh, in this and are interviewed in this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, very good. Well, that's, uh, it, it really is a fascinating story to think that in such recent times, folk were still living the traditional way out there in the desert. By the way, uh, there's a close-up of the sculpture. It's a very impressive sculpture of, uh, uh, that's put there beside the road. And uh, there in the Waluna Cemetery, you have the little markers marking uh, where they have been buried, these dear old people, your relatives, Clinton. <laughs> it really is quite special. Well, you're a committed Christian, Clinton. You're a member of the Waluna Seventh-day Adventist Church. But your parents, your mum and dad, uh, growing up out there in the desert, they wouldn't have been Christians out in the desert. So how did they become Christians? Um, back in those days, um, because it is, um, the climate was changing and it was getting hard to live out in the desert. And our people starting, started to move to the west and they heard stories of a small gold mining town, which is Waluna. Yes. And they also heard stories of um, a mission was opening up where most of our people in the desert was going to. And, and so that's the Seventh-day Adventist, the Seventh -day Adventist mission there. That's the Seventh-day Adventist mission um, Pastor opened Dudley. up by Pastor Bourne. Bourne. Yeah. Yes. But uh, he was told to our people as daddy born. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so as the folk came and lived in there at the mission, Daddy Vaughan would have told them about Jesus. Yes. And about the soon coming of a saviour. And that must have brought hope to many of these people to know that there was a God up in heaven who loved them yes. and a saviour who came and took their punishment so that yeah. they could have eternal life. Now, your dad as a young man had an amazing experience out in the desert one time. Can you tell us that story? Um, I think Gus must have been about nine. You were nine? Yeah. And, yes. um, so you were out there? Dad, dad, were... dad wanted to take our families back to the desert and just to go and, you know, see where, they, where their kids came from. Yes. So that's why I went along with that. And on the way out, one of the kids, one of the um, boys got sick. And um, well, in our culture, we got our um, own medicine men. Yes. We call them modern men. And a bit like a witch doctor witch in some do other yeah. cultures. Yeah. Yes. And um, they, they was trying to fix this young fella. Um, he was like, he, he was un, unconscious, you know? Yes. And they tried all they can to try their best to fix him. And so they remembered Dad, you know, who he was, was a Christian man, you know? And they asked, the family asked Dad to pray for him. And I was right there standing with Dad when he knelt beside the boy when he's um, laying there on the blanket and yeah, dad prayed for him and then he came, got well done. Well, yeah. and that made a big impression on those people, is that yeah. right? Yeah, they, they really felt that the, the God of your dad had the power. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard that they respected your dad ever after because yes. of that experience. Yes. 
It's really wonderful, isn't it? And God does answer prayer. God is real, and uh, He does help us, that's for sure. Now, your mum and dad, they were faithful to Jesus all their lives. Yes. They committed their hearts to Jesus Back out there at the Waluna Mission. mission. And when that closed down, um, there was a big gap between when the Waluna Mission and when the Adventist Church bought a church a building in town. And um, in that gap, we used to worship at, at our house. Yeah. Sabbath, yeah. So your mum and dad kept the church going, really, yeah. after the mission closed until yeah. the church was built in Walluna. Yes. And so people would come to your house for Sabbath worship. Yes. That's wonderful, isn't it? Well, they, your mum and dad went across to, Walu uh, to Karalundi, I should say, and Karalundi is the Adventist Church's uh, indigenous school uh, about or 200 kilometres or so from Waluna. And uh, they worked there. And this was recognition day and your mum and dad were given uh, recognition because of the role that they had played over the years there at Karalundi. And that same weekend there was a groundbreaking ceremony and your mum and dad were part of that uh, groundbreaking ceremony for a new multi-purpose building. Yes. And I was there very recently at, at Karalundi and there's this grand building. And I think, uh, um, Clinton, it's very fitting that this building has been named in honour of your dad. The Ken Farmer Community Hall, dedicated to the memory of a founding member who passed away in 2010. And so very fitting that it's named after him. Well, we're going to take a break now, and when we return, we're going to talk about Clinton's uh, father's funeral, and it was a funeral fit for royalty. Welcome back. I have with me here in the studio today Clinton Farmer from Waluna in Western Australia. Last year something very sad happened to Clinton. He lost his own dear father. He passed away. And Clinton was the one largely responsible for planning the funeral. And it was a funeral fit for royalty. Let's take a look at a few pictures. Now, Clinton, uh, what do we see here? These don't look like Aboriginal people here. Um, the warriors you see there are uh, Fijian warriors, boys. Um, How come Fijian warriors involved in an Aboriginal funeral out in the desert? <laughs> um, because um, there were a few Fijians stayed and worked in Wiluna for, for a long time and um, they became part of the family. Right. And, and your dad helped to, them? To stay there and there to choose and honour someone in the community to become a whale, uh, become a, a high chief for them. And that's, um, they chose dad to be... So your dad was yeah. made a Fiji and high chief. Yes. <laughs> that's quite special, isn't it? Yeah. And so that's why this ceremony as the coffin was being uh, carried down there. And then uh, out at Kookaburra, they set up this big tent 
And what do you say? About 2,000 people came along to the yeah, funeral. 2,000 people. Many of those would be from way out in the desert, yeah. as well as uh, government and mining people. There was quite a few white people there, I remember, at the funeral. Yes. And uh, it was, it, the service started about 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. And with all of the activity, it was still going by dark time at night. Yes. Not actually the funeral service, but the, the burial part, and then the Fijian ceremony, ceremony afterwards, and then the meal that uh, the Fijians put on. Yes. But uh, there's some of the, the crowd of people that have gathered there for the funeral. And you can get some idea of the size of it by all the cars in the procession that came in from Kookaburra uh, to the Waluna Cemetery. And uh, there we see the, 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 the grave there, all beautifully decorated. Now, Clinton, you said to me when you were planning the funeral that you wanted it to be a real Christian testimony. Yes. And um, what did you do to make it that? A lot of prayers, and I just wanted to use that time to witness to so many people. And a, At that time, yeah. and a lot of people, I think, heard positive messages about your dad's faith in Jesus, his hope of the second coming. Yes. And uh, actually, I don't know whether you noticed, but when uh, up the front of the, uh, the, the tent there, they had the big banner of the second coming of Jesus hanging up there all through the funeral service. And then, what did we give to all of the people that came? The second coming postcard. Yes, that little postcard. Every yeah. person got it as a memorial of your dad's faith mm. and his hope in the second coming. Yes. And so I think your aim of sharing uh, his hope certainly was fulfilled. They had some Fijian ceremony there. And uh, then there was meal, as we mentioned, and uh, it was after dark when the last folk were getting their meal. Yes. But it was certainly a memorable day. Now, Clinton, you've had a special privilege. Pastor James Alagapan was going up to Papua New Guinea yes. to run an evangelistic series, and uh, you went along with him. And uh, did a few people come along to the meetings? There were thousands of people. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, to see the number of people, it blew me away. Yes. To see the people hungering for the truth. Yeah. Well, yeah. well that, uh, that's a great experience. Yeah. And, um, and uh, the people up there, how do they compare with your people, do you think, like culture-wise? While, while I was there mixing with, with the people and talking, getting to know them, I noticed the culture is similar to ours. Right. And it made me feel at home. Yes. Yeah. Only the difference was the land, land is nice and green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, because you went uh, in the Morabi area somewhere, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, so it's all luscious and green there. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but the people have a real burden to share Jesus, don't yes. they? Yeah. And that's exciting, it really is. Mm. Now, uh, Clinton... Can you tell us a little about your work? Because you're a working man. You really run a business, a big business. Yeah. And uh, what is this? Um, it is a project started by Dad. Um, um, we have a sandalwood. And That's actually the sandalwood yeah. tree, isn't it? Yes. Now, where, where do you harvest this sandalwood? Out in the desert. Way out, eh? Yeah. What, about eight hours drive out from Waluna? Yes. That's a long way out. That's way out into the direction where Dad was born, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this sandalwood, um, what do you do? You just cut down the trees and take them all no, or what? we use a um, tractor to uproot the tree. Right. And we um, cut it up into small size and um, debark it and we um, load them up on pallets and right. what they do with it then. Is, the there, is there plenty out there? There's a lot, yeah. Right. When, we, when we pull out the trees, we um, replant. Oh, and, right. And we leave 10% um, behind. Right. We don't pull all the trees out and, yes. to, and we do it in a way to, um, in a sustainable way. That's wonderful. Yeah. 
And um, we'll just go to your big shed there that you have at Kookaburra when you bring it in there. I've been there one time and you were on the circular saw there, sawing it into lengths and then it's loaded onto these pallets and then the forklift comes and puts it onto the big semi-trailers to take off. Yes. But Clinton, what do they use this for firewood or what? They use it, it's sounded been used for thousands of years. The Egyptians use it. Really? And nowadays they use it for uh, making perfume. Um, it's used for aromatherapy, um, making soaps, uh, shampoo, all kind of stuff here. So it's a very sought after product then. Yeah. Yes. Now, Clinton, when you're eight hours drive out there in the desert, it's too far to come back for Sabbath, so what do you do? When, during the week, um, before we start work, before we eat at breakfast, we have morning worship, and in the evening before we eat, we have um, evening worship. Yes. And on Sabbath, no work is done. You have we Sabbath, have, we out, have Sabbath there. out there. Real good. Now, Clinton, our time is nearly gone, but I want to ask you, you have a vision for the people out in these remote communities. You're related to many of them. What's your dream? Um, one day I'd love to go out into the desert and tell our families, our people, about the truth that Jesus is coming soon. Very good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a wonderful dream. And may God bless you as you share with the people, your families out there in the desert, because they need to be ready for the coming of Jesus like everybody else all over this earth. God bless you.